This week on The Splash, we take a look at a local Earth Day celebration. Then we see how our library is staying modern. And later, we join the township in disposing of hazardous waste. The Splash is a production of Civic Center TV. We're a news magazine that covers everything from local news to feature stories, all so that we can bring you the latest from the greater West Bloomfield area. And now, let's dive into The Splash. Welcome to The Splash. I'm your host, Sheena Monin, and as always, thank you for joining us. West Bloomfield put on its annual Earth Day celebration. We sent Splash reporter Kiwante Wallace to explore the fun. My family and I recycle. We're here in West Bloomfield at the Parks and Recreation Center for Earth Day to see what you do to make the earth a better place. You want to help a turtle like this? One Hundreds of local families celebrated the return of spring by gathering for the annual Earth Day event in West Bloomfield. The outing featured Lots of activities for the entire family, including a special appearance by Rocky from Paw Patrol. The overriding message for the day was an important one. When we get the earth, we're not owners of the earth, okay. we're stewards of the earth. We pass the earth on to the generations that come after us. So we don't own the land, we are managing the land for the next generation. And as you can guess, the participants at an event like this put in the time to make the earth a better place. Using recyclable water bottles instead of the disposable ones, we refill our bottles. Uh, when we grocery shop, we use refillable, you know, the recycling bags. And just generally, we've been recycling always at our household. So not just on Earth Day. Next uh, Sunday, I'm going to an event, Earth Day event, and I have my, um, my butterfly and moth education stand. And I even got some uh, mail order caterpillars to show to people so they could see something alive. Um, I work at events like these, helping kids learn about nature, and then usually on my free days I go out and hit a trail that's nearby my house. Well, I try to give a good example of what we do at home, separate trash and um, get him to learn things about it, and myself learn because I don't know much as well. What I do privately is I recycle uh, everything that I can in my own apartment because I want to make sure that there's a good, healthy environment for the generations that come after me. Well, with my daughter, we try to, um, you know, recycle. We have separate bins at home for recycling, recycling, and then also sometimes just cardboard boxes. We make, like, fun crafts and um, things like that. I'm part of a lot of clubs and groups, uh, science clubs, earth club. Um, we have solar power. So we work on that all the time. It's student run. I recycle. You recycle. How about you? Planting trees. Planting trees? Uh-huh. Awesome. At home I have a compost bin. Oh, that's awesome. Vladimir. Okay, how about you, young lady? Reusable grocery bags. Reusable grocery bags. That's awesome. Give you guys a round of applause. Go ahead. I'm still continuing to do my part, but what about you? Kiwante Wallace reporting for The Splash. To find out more, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash earthday2018. Libraries are a long-standing tradition, and our local library is doing some great things to stay modern. We sent reporter Tyler Keefe to catch the details. In West Bloomfield, the public library is doing its part to stay ahead of the times and continue to be a destination for information in our community. In today's world, information is always at the tip of our fingers or at the click of a mouse. And information hubs like libraries are slowly dwindling. But the West Bloomfield Library has found a way to not only survive in the instant information age, but thrive in it as well. What we're seeing over time is they want material or information faster and faster. Before, you know, we would say, well, we can get that book. It might take two weeks or we can research and get back to you. Now they want the books instantly. They want the information instantly. When I think about what libraries were able to provide a decade ago, they did have some of the same resources, but they weren't as easy for people to access. But what most digital resources provide today is access from wherever the patron might be. To keep from falling into the same fate as many libraries across the country, 
the West Bloomfield Library has focused on how residents consume media and found ways to make that media even more convenient for its patrons. When our residents are entrusting us with their tax dollars, they have expectations that we're going to deliver on, um, on their wants and their needs. So when we're seeking out new resources, we want to be sure that it's not something that, you know, they're able to get for free somewhere else. We've always been ahead. We've been proactive. So we were one of the first ones to have e-books. We were the first library, one of the first libraries in the area to have internet access for the public. So I think that if you looked at us compared to others, that we have a really proactive stance. And that proactivity pays dividends in keeping West Bloomfield residents flowing through the library's doors. We're all together on a page, on the same page, um, to work towards our mission. And our mission is to inspire, educate, empower, and enrich the lives of our diverse community. And so technology has been a great tool for that. But also, we still have those books that everybody loves to read. Because here in West Bloomfield, when you look at our just under 3 million circulation a year of materials, the majority of those materials are still the book. The West Bloomfield Public Library continues to be a destination for people in our community to stay well read and well informed, thanks to their efforts to stay well prepared in our changing times. Reporting for The Splash, I'm Tyler Keefe. For more information, feel free to stop by our website, civiccentertv.com slash library tech. Still to come, we see how our township is taking care of hazardous materials. And then we take a look at a new episode of Sidewalk Talk. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. Now, back to The Splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm your host, Sheena Manin. Over a thousand vehicles lined the streets for our local hazardous waste disposal event. I joined the community at this productive and fun event. West Bloomfield Township has been a good steward of our local environment in many ways. One way the township helps our area is through the free hazardous waste acceptance day. It's really important to get our citizens involved in recycling in our community. It's a really good way to make them more aware of some of the hazards in our environment and chemicals and, and things that we don't want to get into our lakes and our streams and our woodlands and our wetlands and to let them take an active role in recycling. So it's, it's a very proactive approach. We're very impressed with the huge response every year. We're having a good time meeting our residents and working hard to recycle. The types of things accepted would otherwise greatly harm our environment. Anything that's chemical, anything that will actually say warning, use in well ventilated area, those are all triggers as to hazardous waste and things that shouldn't go into the garbage. So that's the kind of things that you're going to bring here to the township. And we try to do as much as, uh, as possible in our educational efforts to get people to make better consumer choices to not use these products in the first place. Um, if they do have to use it or decide to use certain products that have a more toxic long-term impact to our environment, we don't want to see those things in landfills, streams, storm drains. Uh, so we bring them into this event and then we work with our vendors to find secondary markets and uses for most of these products. 
Making sure to dispose of toxic substances and daily wastes in a proper way is something we all can take part in. Well, it's so important because our environment is our future, right? We, most of us have kids and we want to leave our earth in a good place. And there are things that we create and produce that just are dangerous. So it's really important to make sure that those things aren't going into our natural resources. So this way we can ensure that things are going to the right place. I mean, our waste hauler does a great job of taking our daily waste away, but they're not equipped to take the chemicals and paints and, and medications and all those things. I'm glad our elected officials continue to support and finance this. And uh, I, I continue to hope for the, the best success and we continue to find secondary markets for all these products and protect our environment. As this event continues to repeat and to grow, our township will flourish for many more years to come. For more information on the Hazardous Waste event, visit civiccentertv.com slash hazardous waste 2018. Now it's time for another episode of Sidewalk Talk, where Samana Sheik spoke to Greater West Bloomfield residents to find out their favorite home destination. West Bloomfield is a great place to live, but if you were to move to another state, where would you go? Gosh, Maine, I guess. That's from, I, I grew up in Maine. So. Oh, nice. Um, what are the activities in Maine? Hunting, fishing, being outdoors, all kinds of different things. New Orleans, because it's so hot and wonderful and it's just very, very pretty. They've got lots of awesome wildlife. And the food is amazing. The food is fantastic. I love oysters. I don't know because I just moved here, so I haven't even experienced this state. What state did you move from? Buffalo, New York. That's amazing. How is Buffalo? It's pretty cool. We have the falls and everything in downtown Buffalo with um, Shark Girl and Canal Fest and Kiss the Summer Hello, which is like a concert of a radio station. That's a hard one. There's a lot of different options, but probably Florida because we have other family in Florida. That's amazing. And the weather is probably 10 times better, especially in the wintertime. <laughs> probably Arizona because my father lives there and it's always warm. How many times have you visited Arizona? Uh, probably more than 20. If you were to move to another state, what state would it be and why? Hawaii. Yes. Aloha. Hey. <laughs> because it's warm and beautiful. And everyone wants to go to a warm and beautiful state. Absolutely. Right? That's right. <laughs> uh, Florida, because it's really warm. That makes sense. And you probably like the beaches, right? Yes. <laughs> Colorado. Um, they have a lot of, like, really small towns, and it's just they have, like, really great views of mountains from these small towns, and it's really nice. Nice. Um, is there a specific place in Colorado, like Aspen? Uh, Golden, Colorado. North Carolina is pretty cool, actually. I like that. Have, um, oh, it's pretty scenery, I guess. Have you ever been there? Uh, yeah, I just came back from there in December. Oh, that's awesome. Do you have family that lives there? Uh, no, I was actually in training. I'm in the Army. That's amazing. Oh, my gosh. Good, good for you. Thank you. Those were amazing answers. Thank you, West Bloomfield. Join us for another episode of Sidewalk Talk. If you'd like to see some of our other fun and interesting questions on the show, you can do so anytime and anywhere by visiting our website at civiccentertv.com slash sidewalk talk. And now it's time for our Civic Center event update, where we provide you with all the latest that's happening around Greater West Bloomfield. And if you'd like to stay up to date on all of the following current events yourself, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash events. Let's get started. <laughs> Henry Ford Maple Grove Center is offering a series called, Are You Concerned About Another's Drug Use? This workshop is held monthly on Saturdays from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. and focuses on intervention, resources, impact on both family and friends, as well as what addiction actually is, as well as a myriad of treatment options and plans to help those who need assistance. These sessions are specifically designed for adults only, and registration is needed to attend. You can register by calling Lisa Kaplan at 248 7 
If you are one of millions of Americans who have an interest in learning to play a musical instrument or are looking to get back into it, then the free guitar lesson open house event at Drake Sports Park is for you. Happening on April 25th from 3 p.m. until 7.30 p.m., all registered participants will have the chance to enjoy a free half-hour private guitar lesson to see if signing up for future full-length lessons is a good fit for you. Take advantage of this opportunity whether you are a beginner or are more advanced. This free 30-minute lesson is open for people ages 6 and older. To secure your spot, visit wbparks.org. On Wednesday, April 25th from 6.30 p.m. until 8.30 p.m. at the West Bloomfield Public Library, you can join in on a great opportunity to learn about Google Docs and how to share your work virtually in the cloud. If you are uncertain how to navigate the complex sphere of online sharing, then this course is perfect for you. Skilled professionals will be on hand to guide you through each step and help you improve your skill set. This course is free, but registration is required. For more information, visit wblib.org. Org. Nelson's Wildlife Safari is taking place on Friday, April 27th at the West Bloomfield Public Library. Starting at 11 a.m., Nelson the Animal Guy will bring the magic and adventure of animals from around the world during his show. Kids who love unique animals and faraway places where great adventures take place will love this hands-on experience. Your child will get to see and touch animals they may not have heard about before. This is a free event. For more information, take a look at the West Bloomfield Public Library's website site at wblib.org. The importance of properly disposing of old or unused medication is something our community takes seriously. To help people do just that, the West Bloomfield Police Department has a drop-off box in their lobby for outdated medication year-round. But taking place on April 28th from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. is the DEA National Prescription Drug Take-Back Day, where the emphasis of proper disposal is supported by the West Bloomfield Community Coalition as well as national organizations. Stop by the West Bloomfield Police Department to engage with their friendly staff who will help you know how to dispose of medication. For more information, contact Lisa Berkey at 248-928-4942. The fourth annual pet adoption event is happening at West Bloomfield Parks off of Walnut Lake Road on April 28th from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. Several representatives from rescue and foster groups will be there with their available pets so that members of the community can interact with available pets and learn more about the organizations there. If you're looking to add a furry friend to your family, this event is for you. For more information, visit wbparks.org. The Chaldean Cultural Center Museum is open to the public on Fridays from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. Come learn about this fascinating culture complete with hands-on activities, multimedia presentations, and a showcasing of special artifacts from time periods gone by. Tours are available by appointment and cost $5 for a self-guided tour and $10 for a guided tour. To schedule your tour or find out more details, be sure to visit ChaldeanCulturalCenter.org. On Thursday, May 10th, a special senior dance is being offered by the West Bloomfield Parks at the Glen Oaks Country Club. Walk the red carpet, enjoy good food, and dance the night away to a live band. This event is happening from 6.30 p.m. until 9.30 p.m. and costs $24 per person or $160 per table. Bring your loved one and your friends to this fun-filled evening you'll remember for years to come. Tickets go fast, so be sure to register before the May 4th deadline. For more information, visit wbparks.org. And that's all for now. However, if you're looking to find even more events going on in your neighborhood, then be sure to follow us at civiccentertv.com slash events and look up our events calendar. Or watch us here for more information on everything going on in the greater West Bloomfield area. As we head into the break, stay tuned because afterwards I'll be talking with Kyle Mack, Olympic silver medalist and West Bloomfield native. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. Civic Center TV is your home for everything greater West Bloomfield. Here you can tune into community programming such as our weekly news magazine show, The Splash, as well as coverage of local events and meetings in Kego Harbor, Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, and West Bloomfield. You can also watch all of your local programming online anytime at civiccentertv.com. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. Civic Center TV has gone social. Now it's easier than ever to watch, save, like, and share our videos online. 
See what's happening in your neighborhood, on the streets, and on the web at civiccentertv.com. Be a part of the conversation and get involved. We would love to hear from you. For links to our social media pages, visit us at our website or find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. And now, back to The Splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm Sheena Monin. In the studio with me this week is Kyle Mack, West Bloomfield native and Olympic silver medalist. Kyle, thank you so much for being here well, today. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk about your journey, your accomplishments, so many accomplishments for someone your age. Let's go ahead and start in the beginning. You were kind of a, a skier first, right? And then yep. something happened and you made the switch and never looked back. Tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, my parents always went up to Boyne every weekend with family and friends and uh, it was always a kind of a tradition to you know be on snow every weekend so yeah my parents got me into skiing at a young age um, I took a hard slam one time because I thought I could do it on my own and you know ever since then it just kind of skiing never worked for me my dad put on a snowboard and ever since then I never looked back it was like magic it just felt better felt more natural yeah I mean it just right away it clicked for me everything started working I could like ride without my dad's leash and okay. like it just uh, yeah everything kind of worked and no, ever since then I snowboarded and we would go up to the point every weekend and it was awesome. Great, and so you continued that on throughout your young adult life and then when you were what, about 11 years old, you won a competition. Tell us a little bit about that. Yep, when I was 11, uh, I won my first like major competition. It was the US Open Junior Gym and it was in Vermont and uh, it's like the 13 and under category and uh, it's it was insane. Like when I won that, it was like one of the coolest things. It was like my first big win. Yeah. And that's kind of when it started kicking into high gear and, you know, contests started happening more often mm -hmm. and the bigger ones started coming around like Dew Tour and the Grand Prix. So, yeah, that was kind of like one of the initiative starts to like my big competitions. How exciting. So how did it feel being a West Bloomfield native but yet having the opportunity to travel so much? What did that feel like? I mean, it was insane. It was so cool being able to travel all over the U.S. And even yeah. at a young age, it would go to Europe and stuff a couple of times. It was definitely a struggle for me with school. Like, it was definitely a oh, lot of work yeah. to, like, work and, you know, make sure that my school got done and that I was still being able to, like, snowboard every day. So, you know, I'd be snowboarding from 9 to 4 and then do school work from, like, 5 to 8 at night. And, uh... I made it work and it was I actually had so much fun traveling so it was like yeah. super cool and uh, yeah so many cool experiences at such a young age. Wow that's it must be really motivating okay I gotta get the school done and then I can go play and have fun right? Yeah that was actually yeah. the other way around I'd play yeah. and have fun and then oh, I had to get the school okay, work because yeah. you can't snowboard at night so I'd have to you okay. know. Exciting yeah. well good for you that must have been a challenge and a good example there learning how to balance both at a young age yeah. it'll take you really far in life now when you were preparing for the Olympics uh, you started back the 2014 Olympics was when you first tried yep. and you were really really close to making it tell us a little bit about what propelled you what motivated you to say you know what I'm really good I know I can do this I can work hard go back and conquer all take us through that thought process yeah I mean I missed the Olympics by one spot so oh, that's was, so crazy. It was definitely a bummer. I was so yeah. close to being there. And, um, I mean, it, it definitely created a lot of hunger in me, a lot of, yeah. you know, motivation. I wanted, you know, I wanted to make the next one. That was my goal. And uh, I had four years to train and practice. Uh, I, there's still all these contests going on and stuff. So I didn't, I didn't let it, like, get me down and kill me. But, yeah. you know, it, it definitely, you know, made me want to snowboard more and made me want to get better at it. So, yeah, the four years went by. I kept training with my coach Bill. I got better. Um, things just started to click, and uh, my I, I won the U.S. Open in 2016, so that was a huge one for me. Awesome. And then, yeah, I made it to this one, and it worked yeah. out, and I got a silver. No, for real. Now, so this one, they had a first-time experience with something called Big Air. Now, for those watching who maybe don't know, tell us what that is. What did that feel like to be the one to play so high at the first time that this happened? Yeah, I mean, uh, so Big Air is based off one jump. You oh, hit okay. one jump, and then you have three runs, and your best two count. So big air in, in slope style, you have you know eight features, and you got to make them all big air. You have one, oh, yeah. so yeah, it's different. It's different to the Olympic Games because yeah, it's the first year is in it. Mm -hmm. So for it to be the first year, it had a lot of hype. It was like yeah, it was like one of the last events, so yeah. it was like really cool. Like everyone came, mm -hmm. and it was it was amazing. Like the whole experience with the big air, I thought it turned out super cool. They had a great turnout, and like I thought it helped snowboarding and. 
Absolutely. Yeah, sweet. Now, what really surprised me when you brought the medal in today was how heavy it is. Yep. Like it is massive. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. And like, you have to wear that thing around your neck sometimes, right? Uh, For photo ops and things. Uh, yeah, I do. I, yeah. <laughs> I don't bring it out as much as most people would. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, yeah, it's way heavier. I definitely gained a couple new neck muscles. I'd have yeah. to say, <laughs> but. Uh, it's super cool. I mean, whenever I bring it out, people get so stoked, and everyone's yeah. like, oh, my gosh, like, well, this is so crazy. Well, so. I mean, it's a lifetime of effort that, that yeah. to, to get there, for sure. Now, you are back in the area, at least for a little while, before you go on and, and do more of your snowboarding career. Uh, tell us what the reception has been like here in West Bloomfield and in Metro Detroit. I mean, it's, it's insane to come home and actually yeah. have people, like, recognize you and be like, you know, congratulations and stuff. And, uh... It's so cool, you know, everyone around here has been so supportive of me from like all my teachers back in grade school to like my parents, like especially my parents, like they've done so much for me in my life mm -hmm. that it's just, it's just so cool to come home and, you know, have all this hype around me and like all these people that want to come out and like, you know, say hi. I got like all my friends, little nephews and cousins, you know, yeah. whenever I go hang out with them, like, oh, hold on, like, let me FaceTime my cousin real quick. They won't believe I'm with you right now. And like <laughs> all these cool things. So yeah. it's just like, it's, it. It really blows me away and makes me so happy that like you know that I've actually like motivated and kind of influenced kids yeah. to get into snowboarding and like yeah absolutely it's, it, but it's like also weird to me because I'm so young and it's just like yeah. it all happens You're so like, fast I have so much like, life ahead of me still yeah, and, and many more accomplishments to come for yeah, sure it's crazy so like yeah I mean I'm gonna shoot for the next one in four years in Beijing so absolutely, yeah. that's my next goal and uh, I'm gonna keep snowboarding as much as I can and uh, mm -hmm. Just kind of keep doing what I do. Absolutely. So in conclusion, you would really encourage young people, even if you have an early setback, keep trying. If you're passionate about it, if you have that support behind you, anything really is possible. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've went through injuries to the oh, point where yeah. I wanted to give up at it. And, uh, yeah, it's just about, you know, getting through it and persevering and making, you know, making your dream happen. Absolutely. Well, thank you for being here well, today. Thanks, thanks for, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Once again, everyone, we've been speaking with Olympic silver medalist Kyle Mack. Now let's head over to another of our recurring segments called Parenting on the Go, where Samana Sheik spoke to Dr. Paula Ruffin about the importance of our youth maintaining a healthy diet. Hello, and welcome to Parenting on the Go. I am your host, Samana Sheik. Joining me today is Dr. Paula Ruffin from New Hudson Chiropractic and Wellness Center. Dr. Ruffin is a certified first-line therapy health and lifestyle nutrition physician and a frequent presenter at the annual Western Oakland County Parenting Education Fair. Dr. Ruffin, one of the most interesting presentations that you have given is on the food pantry. Can you please describe what the food pantry is? Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I've been a chiropractor for 20 years and a practicing functional nutritionist for 15. I give many workshops in the community, and it became a request from people to get these food lists because I was always talking about what people should and shouldn't eat. So it was created out of necessity. And I created these food lists so that parents can actually help their families eat healthy. One of the biggest things that I found is that when parents can eliminate toxic chemicals from the food that they're feeding their kids, then we can actually have a much healthier family. Um, a funny story about that. I actually used to be obese when oh I gosh. was 14 years old. Wow. So I weighed 198 pounds. So these lists, I know, <laughs> these lists can come in handy. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you about was the actual food labels. Mm -hmm. Can you describe the food labels in general and the confusion about food labels? Absolutely, and they are confusing. So the thing that I recommend is that you just look at the actual ingredients. The numbers can be very confusing. So just look at the ingredients, and if you're reading things that don't actually sound like food, or if they're not on my never not no way of things to have in your food list, you need to put that back. And food labels also can get overwhelming. So I always say, if you're getting overwhelmed by reading a label, put it down, you're eating too much from a box, and go buy more fresh produce. So you just mentioned specific ingredients that people mm -hmm. should avoid. Can you just mention a few of those ingredients on the food labels that people should put back right away? Sure. So my rules are no artificial sweeteners, flavors, colors, and stimulants. Those are all incredibly inflammatory to the nervous system, and which means they flare up your brain and they cause brain on fire is what I call that. And so that can, if you think about that, like who can think clearly when their brain is on fire and inflamed? So think of ADD, ADHD, any chronic 
chronic health issues, even obesity as a matter of fact. So, so we want to eliminate the, these things and get the fire out. So just look at the ingredient labels and that will get you started. So to conclude, what's the best way people can start making healthy choices? Use these lists to your advantage. I really want people to take them to the grocery store with them and get your kids involved in reading the labels as well because it's really important that your kids learn young and they will tell you to put things back. So use the list, get a big garbage can, go into your kitchen, take that never not no way list, throw anything away that's on there, and then take the list to the grocery store and buy all the fresh things on the list. And this is so powerful that I had a patient the very first time I gave this particular workshop, she called me six months later to become a patient to tell me that she did this, threw everything away, bought all the fresh produce, she lost 40 pounds, and the, her autism, the, her child with autism, he started to improve. So just eliminating all the toxic chemicals from their diet helped tremendously for her family. That's an amazing story. Yeah, it's amazing. So where can we find these lists? So they're going to be listed on the West Bloomfield Youth Assistance website. If people have any questions, they can contact me at drruffin.com or on my Facebook page at New Hudson Chiropractic Wellness Center. Thank you so much, Dr. Ruffin, for joining us today. And thank you for joining us for this episode of Parenting on the Go. If you would like to look up more helpful parenting tips, you can visit the West Bloomfield Youth Assistance website at webyouthassistance.org. For more episodes of Parenting on the Go, visit civiccentertv.com slash parenting to go. Now it's time for our final segment on the splash called Person of the Week, where we recognize those within the community who are either inspiring or providing toward others. And this week's recipient is Jackie Callen, West Bloomfield resident and renowned boxing manager. Educated in the School of Hard Knocks, Jackie Callen has made a career out of motivating people to reach their highest potential. Known as the First Lady of Boxing, Jackie Callen has experienced a plethora of success managing and promoting professional boxers, helping some of the world's greatest athletes not only fight for their dreams, but achieve them as well. But Jackie Callen has not only committed her expertise to motivating athletes, Jackie is heavily involved in Her Friendship Matters, where she partners with successful women throughout Metro Detroit to mentor, motivate, and support young women from the inner city, providing them with the guidance, experience, and inspiration that everyone needs to find success in life. A firm believer in paying it forward, Jackie strives to make a concerted effort each day to help another person in any way that she can. Her motivation to bring joy, happiness, and hope to others in our community and beyond shows that for Jackie, success is not only the happiness that you find yourself, but also the happiness that you provide to others. Jackie Callen is utilizing her natural qualities of motivation, dedication, and perseverance to help others build their own successes and happiness, which is why she is our Person of the Week. If you happen to know someone who is providing a service to their community, then let us know by sending an email to the splash at civiccentertv.com. We want to congratulate those who are making a difference in our area, and we appreciate all of your suggestions. That's going to do it for us this week, but remember, you can watch new episodes of The Splash every Monday at 5.30 p.m. or throughout the week for replays. You can also watch every episode online at civiccentertv.com. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook under Civic Center TV 15, YouTube at Civic Center TV 15, and on Twitter at Civic Center TV for more information. For all of our friends in Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, Kego Harbor, and West Bloomfield, I'm Sheena Monin. Thank you for watching The Splash.